Okay, welcome everyone. Today we're going to be looking at how to close a mouth on a reference image for use with a face texture for the WWE 2K games, really any game where you need to create a custom face texture. So a quick disclaimer before we begin, this method works on mouths that are slightly open like this, but not like fully open. And I'll, I'll try to show an example on the screen so you understand what I mean, but there's a different method for mouths that are open really wide as compared to something like this. This video is going to be focused solely on ones like this that are a quick and easy fix if you've got Photoshop. If you don't have Photoshop, there's a number of free alternatives out there in browser programs such as Pixlr and Photopia. I believe Photopia has a lot of the same features as Photoshop, so you may be able to do it one-to-one -one there. But, you know, look around, see what you like best. So let's begin. As you can see here, we have a reference image of Priscilla Kelly or whatever her WWE name is. Regardless, mouth is slightly open, just barely ruins the reference image. I mean, obviously there's some hair in the way otherwise, but that's not what we're focused on. What you're going to want to do first is go up to Image, or I'm sorry, Enhance, and go to Adjust Facial Features. And as you can see, it's going to open up this menu. And over here we have the lips panel. This is what we're going to be mostly working with in this video. So we have a few options here. Smile, height, width, upper lip, lower lip, so on and so forth. If you want, you can play around with those. But what we're going to be mainly focused on is height. Because as you can see, when I take the height and drag it all the way down, the mouth starts to close. And inversely, it starts to open when you move it up. So... What we're going to be doing for the most part is just moving the mouth all the way down on the height scale. And what you're going to want to pay attention to is the width of the mouth as it closes, as well as the size of the lips, because you don't really want those getting distorted. So, ways you can do that is first start by taking the height all the way down, and if you notice the mouth is getting a little bit smaller horizontally, you can bring the width up a little bit. If not, you can just leave it be. If the upper lip is getting small, you can increase that the lower lip is getting small, you can increase that, or decrease it if it's getting too large. But, we haven't done a whole lot to it yet, so we're just going to start with the height all the way down. So go ahead and accept that. And we're just going to repeat that process a few times until the mouth is mostly closed. So once again, we're going to pull the height down. And we're probably going to do that about one more time, just to make sure. And we'll adjust the lips on this one. So make it a little bit wider, give the upper lip some size, not a whole lot. Maybe adjust the lower lip a bit. But that's about where we want to be for that step. But as you can see, it's not fully closed yet. So, what we're going to want to do at this point is duplicate this layer, so we have a safety layer underneath. And then we want to go to the Spot Healing Brush tool. And for this part, you'll want to zoom in on the mouth so you can see what you're doing. But once you take the spot healing brush tool, this area where it's got like the teeth and just that dark crease where the mouth closes, you'll just want to run over it a bit with the brush until it looks to be about the same color and tone as the rest of the skin. You might have to undo it and do it in segments or just give it a couple tries altogether. But that's about what you want, maybe a little bit more on the red side, but it's not going to matter a whole lot once we get to the next step, so just cover it up until you're content with it, like so. I'm gonna undo that because it got a little bit of the edge, and you'll probably want to do the area where there's lips separately from the area where it's just the rest of the mouth, because it's going to create that different tone. And if you're worried about the color right now, don't. We're gonna be messing with it in a second anyway. But as you can see, once we zoom out, you can see how the mouth is starting to take shape a little bit, but it still looks a little awkward. So what I'm going to do is create a layer between these two layers. I'm going to turn the top layer invisible for a second so we can get the base layer back. And then I'm going to zoom in, take the color picker tool, and pick right in that like dark crease between the lips. So now what I'm going to want to do is take the brush tool, once again make sure you're on that middle layer that doesn't have any face on it, resize the brush, I prefer to use a soft edge brush. So as you can see here, I prefer a brush like this instead of like this. But then resize it to about the size of the gap, and just kind of lightly draw over the teeth, 
and the other areas where the crease is. Because basically we want to match up the skin where there's a crease here to the rest of the lips. So I'm just going to lightly go over it to create the illusion of having a crease. But as you can see, that doesn't look very good. So I'm going to turn our previous layer back on with the skin, and then I'm going to go to the opacity and lower it to roughly 50 to 60 percent. There's no exact measurement, just kind of feel it out. So right about there. And as you can see, for the sake of a texture or anything like that, it looks like a closed mouth when you compare it to the original image. So that's how you close a mouth. And then you'll just want to flatten your layers, merge your visible, and there's your reference. Then you can then copy it over to your texture and do what you need to. Anyways, that's going to be about it for this video. Hope you enjoyed.